bone marrow has undoubtedly played a huge role throughout evolutionary history. It is a super calorically dense source of nutrition that would have been left behind by other carnivorous animals. Whether we scavenged other corpses or procured this from the animal ourselves, it is undoubtedly one of the most nutritious and calorically dense parts of the animal. From vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids, marrow has essentially all of the bodybuilding nutrients that give us life. But for anyone who's ever worked in a butcher shop or tried to cut open marrow bones, it's fairly difficult to access. Uh, so I figured since I have a femur bone today, could we actually break it open in a realistic way? Would a caveman have been able to do this? Uh, so we're going to do two things today. Uh, we're going to try to break this open raw and then we're going to uh, put this over a fire and see if that makes it easier to break. On top of being 100 degrees outside, we have one hell of a fire going. So I'm just going to plop this marrow bone in the middle of our fire as I would imagine a caveman would. So this fire is probably about a thousand degrees at least. Uh, what I'm gonna do is close this lid and I'm gonna leave this for maybe like 45 minutes to an hour. Hopefully uh, we don't just have like a charred black bone that's completely ruined. Uh, but this fire is going to get very hot very quick. So what I think I might actually do is uh, we'll come down in about 15, 20 minutes and, and see what's going on. Maybe we'll have to take the bone out. There's a lot of heat in there. Holy shit. Uh. Now, some of you guys may be thinking, Frankie boy, cavemen did not use sledgehammers. Yes, but cavemen had a bit more testosterone than Frankie boy, and they were not built like a fairy boy twink. So Frankie boy is going to use a sledgehammer today under the assumption that a caveman using some sort of stone tool or a rock would have a similar blunt force effect. And when I put this bone down, there's already a bunch of flies all over it. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because even if all of the meat on the outside of this bone was eaten, even if the fly had laid eggs and there were maggots all over the meat, the marrow on the inside would still be intact, regardless of how old the bone was. Uh, so let's uh, take a crack at this and see if we can get some bone marrow before the flies do. This is like a, a 10 pound sledgehammer, so uh, I'm not gonna swing this thing too hard. I'm just gonna try to be accurate and uh, get it maybe here and then here so we have two nice parts. Oh, okay, well, maybe I hit it a little too hard. Uh-oh, I didn't see that. There's like a, a thousand little tiny ants on this wood stump. So I'm gonna stop cutting this marrow for now. And uh, we're gonna go inside and we'll take a look at this bone marrow. But first, uh, we have to try to crack open our cooked bone marrow. Uh, all right, boys and girls, so I overcooked the bone a little bit, and as I just turned this camera on, I don't know if you guys could see, the bone actually broke. Uh, so I guess that kind of answers our question. It is hot as fuck over here, man. Uh, so I don't really want to get too close to this fire. But this, um, you could see, you know, despite charring the hell out of this bone, the, the marrow inside when the bone shattered open was still edible. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do here is, I think I'm going to get another bone and, and put it in here and uh, hopefully not cook it too much. Uh, but we don't really have to, uh, we don't really have to do this again because we answered our question if heating it uh, allows it to crack easier. All right, so we got bone number two. Bone number two in the fire. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna close this again against my better judgment. Uh, 
and we'll be back in I don't know hour and a half hopefully that one doesn't break but if it does we'll just crack open the raw one I am not too optimistic about opening this grill I had to go do something for about an hour and a half and the grill is still at 300 degrees so I have a feeling we're gonna have a pile of charred bones but maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised okay yeah that all right so this isn't good um i guess we could take a closer look though after about two hours the bone is still on fire somehow and you guys can't really see but you know all the marrow leaked out of the bone and we just have charred bone fragments here literally just crumbles apart I'm assuming there's a sweet spot here somewhere that I'm missing where if you cook the bone for like maybe half an hour at a high heat then you take the bone off the fire you let it cool and then you can shatter the bone open and get the marrow out uh, but that seems like it actually requires some effort and not just leaving it in a grill so I guess we could try it one more time all right so this is the last bone I got so no more tries after this I'm going to try to get this charred enough that it's easier to break, but not completely ruined. I know I said I was going to watch this and I left it for about 10 minutes. When I opened the grill, the whole bone was ignited again, like we saw earlier. So I hosed it off and cooled it off and we're gonna let this uh, cool on the ground for maybe an hour or two and then we'll see if it opens easier than the first one. I have practically destroyed my grill by turning it into a furnace. I almost burnt my face off and now is the moment of truth. So our marrow bone is uh, cool to the touch, doesn't look cool by any means. And I'm going to give this a light tap with the sledgehammer and see what happens. Hopefully the marrow is not melted inside. Oh shit. All right, well, that was a light tap, and I think I could have just dropped this thing on the floor and it would have crumbled apart. Okay, so, unfortunately, what happened was, at some point during the cooking process, the, the marrow seeped out through a crack. Because if we look on the inside here, none of the marrow is there. Uh, I mean, there's a little bit here, maybe. Yeah, there's a little bit of very overcooked marrow. You know, I had a feeling I should have just taken the marrow bone out when it was cooked on the outside. I knew the inside would have been melted and heated through. And I guess this is why the Eskimos, you know, just boiled the bones for a little bit in water. You know, when you're boiling something in water, it has a constant temperature of about 212 degrees. But when you put a bone in an open flame that goes up to seven, eight, nine hundred degrees, it's just too high of a temperature for anything to be life-sustaining or life-giving, that is. And any food taken to that temperature is going to be completely destroyed, even if it's encased in bone. Uh, so may maybe we'll explore this in the future. Uh, we're going to go inside and take a look at the raw marrow right now. Uh, what, what I wanted to try to achieve by cooking the marrow was to just show you guys, hey, if you take this whole marrow bone and put it on a fire for 30 minutes and then take it off, let it cool, when you crack open the marrow bone, you should have some soft, cooked, delicious marrow ready to eat. Uh, but it, it seems like it's, it's much easier to just break open the raw marrow bone and scoop the raw marrow out. So whatever cavemen did, uh, they were certainly better at it than I am. After several unsuccessful attempts at cooking the marrow, we are back inside with the raw bones. Unfortunately, some ants decided to trail along inside. Uh, hopefully, yeah, there's a lot of them. So, I probably won't be eating this, but we could take a look at it and see, you know, where the bone split and everything. You know, if we put this back together like this, I didn't, I didn't hit this that hard. You know, I hit it once in the middle and it seemed to be a perfect spot. I'm sure if I just took a hammer 
and I hit it with the hammer, the thing would have shattered. So you don't need a sledgehammer to do this. And, and you could certainly do it with a rock or you could throw it against a hard surface and break this open just fine. Oops. And then once you break this open, you know, you have access to this marrow. And, and how they would have extracted the marrow might, might seem a little difficult, you know, without like a knife or some sort of scoop. But you could continue to crack this bone and continue to break it open. You know, you don't have to, you know, completely scoop the marrow out from one center point. Uh, I mean, that would make it easier. You know, but keep in mind, I could, I could keep, I could literally shatter this whole bone completely and just, and just pull the pieces of marrow out as it shatters. You know, I was really hoping that we, we would have been able to cook this because then if you open this up, you know, this marrow would probably flow out a lot easier. Or it might just be completely liquid and make a mess, who knows. We got most of the marrow out of the bone. I mean, maybe like 10 to 15% of the marrow is still in there. And uh, this is very dangerous. As you could see, you know, the, ed the edges of this bone are pretty sharp. And I can imagine it being very easy to cut yourself. But this is one femur bone of one animal. And this is probably at least eight to 900 calories worth of bone marrow. So, you know, from a survival standpoint, from a procuring calories in nature standpoint, you know, the amount of nutrition that one ruminant animal can give us is astounding. And imagine if this was, you know, some of the larger wild game that we used to hunt in packs. You know, imagine a femur bone that's three, four, five times as big as this. The amount of marrow in one of those bones could feed your whole tribe for probably a day or two and, and maybe even more. It's very clear when we experience these foods in their natural state, try to process them, and, and even taste them when they're raw, this is the diet that humans are supposed to be following. And I know some of you guys, eh, Frank, what are you using gloves for? Your cavemen didn't have gloves. Look how greasy my hands are. Cavemen didn't have cameras either. And a caveman would not want a greasy camera. So I think what makes the most sense here is an hour or two over a pretty hot fire uh, mine was way too hot, as we saw, and that should yield the perfect result. You know, you cook the meat, uh, you take it off when the meat's nice and brown, you let it cool, you eat the meat, you crack the bone open, and then you have your nourishing bone marrow. I am sorry things did not go as planned. If you guys want me to try this again, maybe get some more of these bones, let me know. I think we have a pretty good understanding of how our ancestors would have done this with the raw or the cooked marrow and that it's very practical and easy to do you know without any tools uh, whether they hunted the animal with spears used a deadfall trap or chased it off of a cliff it's pretty clear that humans procured the majority of their calories from animal foods as it is the only calorically dense source of food in nature that can sustain our brain size, our body size, and give us the leisure time and ability to do things like sit in a house and film videos. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and share the video if you can. Fortunately, you don't have to break open femur bones with a sledgehammer because at Frankie's Free Range Meat, we cut our marrow bones for you canoe style. Uh, so we have these nice uh, cross-cut lengthwise marrow bones uh, that you could just scoop the marrow out and eat it as is, or you could throw them in the oven and then dip your steak in the, the melted marrow fat. Really delicious. Go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com. We have femur bones, we have tibia bones, and we have a fat pack in general. We also have grass-fed beef products. Uh, we recently added Wagyu beef as well as organic beef. Uh, this marrow is actually from uh, the Wagyu cattle. Uh, so if you want Wagyu beef, organic beef, and a bunch of other things I mentioned at the most affordable price online, frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Thanks again, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.